My name is Ruth Geraldus. I'm a consultant neurologist with a special interest in multiple sclerosis. And I'll be presenting a study where I've looked at the interaction between vascular disease and multiple sclerosis in a unique post-mortem cohort where brain uh, tissue and autopsy reports were available for study. There is a marked heterogeneity in multiple sclerosis clinical severity with some patients reaching clinical disability milestones much sooner than others. Multiple sclerosis patients with vascular comorbidities such as hypertension, heart disease and others will need a walking aid much sooner than those without those vascular comorbidities. The reason for this is unclear. Vascular risk factors have been associated with the accumulation of uh, vascular disease in the general population, but whether multiple sclerosis patients have a higher burden of cardiovascular disease is unclear. Epidemiological studies suggest that this might be the case, but very few studies have looked at the objective measures of atherosclerosis in multiple sclerosis. Attempts to link vascular risk factors to cerebral small vessel disease have relied on surrogate in vivo imaging markers, which are difficult to distinguish from imaging signatures related to multiple sclerosis. Standardized scoring of cerebral small vessel disease pathology markers only recently have been available in our study, we hypothesized that uh, multiple sclerosis associates with more systemic and cerebral vascular disease, and that our aims were to obtain objective measures of end-stage cardiovascular burden and cerebral small vessel disease in multiple sclerosis and controls, and to compare the burden of cerebral small vessel disease between multiple sclerosis and controls, taking into account the cardiovascular burden. A human autopsy cohort of 85 pathologically confirmed multiple sclerosis cases and 68 age and sex matched controls with comprehensive standardized full body autopsy reports and brain material were selected for study. In a subset of cases, the extent of cerebral small vessel disease was also assessed. The spectrum of atheroma in the aorta in coronary artery and uh, measures of end organ damage such as myocardial infarction, left ventricular hypertrophy and ischemic stroke were assessed to devise a systemic vascular disease score and several uh, features of cerebral small vessel disease uh, including arterial sclerosis, periarterial space dilatation and others were uh, assessed to develop a global cerebral small vessel disease index. Periarterial inflammation was also assessed in multiple sclerosis, scoring was done outside plaque, and in this group, total number of plaques and active plaques uh, was recorded. Regression models were fitted to determine the influence of multiple sclerosis diagnosis on systemic vascular disease score, adjusting for age at death, and on global cerebral small vessel disease, adjusting uh, for uh, systemic vascular disease score in uh, group stratified uh, above and below the median age uh, at death. In the uh, MS group, uh, the uh, models were used to evaluate influence of systemic vascular disease score and global cerebral small vessel disease index on total number of plaques and of active plaques. Left ventricular hypertrophy was more common in controls than multiple sclerosis. There were no significant differences in the other systemic vascular disease markers. But when we plot systemic vascular disease score in, on age at death, you can see that the uh, younger at death uh, MS patients have uh, less systemic vascular disease compared with controls, but this steeply increases with uh, age at uh, death. Periarterial space dilatation, emosidrine deposition, and periarterial inflammation were more common in multiple sclerosis compared with controls. Moreover, you can see here that these fibrinoid uh, tissue that uh, has a veil-like appearance was much more common in multiple sclerosis around arterioles than in uh, controls. Positive correlation between global cerebral small vessel disease index and systemic vascular disease score was seen in MS but not in controls. And when we separate the uh, groups above and below the uh, median age at death, multiple sclerosis associated with a higher burden of cerebral small vessel disease adjusting for uh, systemic vascular disease score in the young at death 
uh, group. However, uh, this was not uh, observed in uh, the older at death group. Cerebral small vessel disease increased with the total number of plaques uh, and of active plaques, arterial sclerosis, periarterial emosidrin deposition, periarterial space dilatation associating with both these features. This was uh, driven by the young at death age group. In summary, we have shown that systemic vascular disease is lower and cerebral small vessel disease is increased in young at death multiple sclerosis cases, arguing against a common trigger for both the multiple sclerosis and arterial sclerosis. However, suggesting that the arterial plays a key role in MS pathology and is possibly related to MS severity and uh, may lead to hyperperfusion neuronal damage. Multiple sclerosis patients are more prone to develop cerebral small vessel disease than controls, and this further supports uh, that vascular disease uh, uh, prevention needs to be considered in MS treatment.